By now, you've probably already watched my breakdown of Jim Cornette's YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna be breaking down the marketing strategies that helped my Jim Cornette video get 36,000 views in just four days on a channel that had less than 1,000 subscribers at the time. If you apply some of the same strategies that I put into the Jim Cornette video, you're gonna start getting more views and more subscribers on your YouTube channel as soon as today. Welcome to Video SEO Club. Whenever I set up any YouTube video, I have a simple formula to ensure people will watch. A-I-D-A. -A. Attention, interest, decision, action. You may have heard of this. You may think it comes from a marketing class, but I've never actually taken a marketing class. This comes from Glen Gary Glen Ross and the spirited speech that Alec Baldwin gave in this scene. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Now I'll spare you all the profanity and vulgar remarks to get to the core essence of what AIDA actually means. AIDA, attention, interest, decision, action. The top portion of any YouTube video funnel is always going to be attention. And where does your attention come from? Thumbnail and title. Now starting with the title, you'll see that this video is called Jim Cornette Breaks All YouTube's Rules. That in and of itself makes the viewer think maybe Jim's doing something wrong on the platform. This could actually entice a view coming from somebody who doesn't like Jim to possibly see how he may be removed or canceled, deplatformed, whatever you want to call it. But really what we're talking about here is the fact that Jim goes against the conventional wisdom of many YouTube experts and keeps it pretty bare bones when it comes to his videos. But by titling our YouTube video, Jim Cornette Breaks All YouTube's Rules, people are a little bit curious. And you couple that with this thumbnail, and now you got a click. You have your attention in the AIDA structure. So we've covered the title here, but let's talk about this thumbnail. So we often hear, don't judge a book by its cover. But on YouTube, really the first thing we notice are thumbnails. And you'll kind of notice in my thumbnail, I have Jim looking a little bit sinister, with kind of a red overlay on his face. And we have Bruce Pritchard kind of peering over Cornette's left shoulder, dressed like Brother Love. And you'll see over Cornette's right shoulder, his arch nemesis, Vince Russo, right? Wearing some New York Nick colored gear. So obviously I put these two other podcasters in Jim Cornette's thumbnail because he does have history with both men. And then we have this AI wrestling arena in the back. You could almost see the ring behind Jim's head. It resembles a WWE setup, an AEW setup. So we have a lot of things working in the thumbnail. But this was not the original idea for the thumbnail. I actually screen recorded that process, so we're going to take you through that right now and show you what that original thumbnail may have looked like if I stuck with it. So when I go to make my thumbnail, I always open Adobe Photoshop. I'll select 1280 by 720. This gives us the correct ratio, but it's also small enough to where we can work with some low resolution photos if need be. And we hit create. So I already created this image of Jim Cornette on my community tab. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to make two layers. I did not save this as a PSD, and that was a major mistake that I made. Because I didn't know I was going to use this for the actual thumbnail, but I'm going to go with it because I like it. So I'm going to select Remove Background for this layer. It did a decent job, but we got to go in there and clean up that mask a little bit. So we're going to do the Add to Mask. And obviously, we're going to need to use the Polygonal Select tool to get in here and clean this up a little further. Down here, I'm going to get that jacket back in. On the edges, I think we look good. I think it looks good up here. Luckily, the AI that we used for this Microsoft designer did not add any extra fingers to Jim's uh, hand there. So that's always good. It's kind of dressed like Ronald McDonald. But that's similar to what Jim would actually wear. Copy this. Throw it in here. Make this a little bit bigger. So you always want to use show transfer controls. Go proportionately resize this. Zoom back out to get an idea of how this is going to look on YouTube. I see, I don't like this now. So we're not going to use this. We're going to go to Microsoft Designer and make a new prompt. I like to open up Notepad because designer.microsoft.com doesn't update the prompt fast enough. So I'll write the prompt here first. So let's see what this prompt gives us here on Microsoft Designer. That's actually quite good right here. I like this one and I like this one. I like this one because there's no head. It's like Microsoft Designer knows I need to put Jim's head in there. So we're gonna open this in a new tab. We're gonna save it. I might like this one better, but it depends on the image that we find of Jim's face on Google that we wanna use. I like this one because we can cut it right here and it will still be a logical thumbnail. So let's 
bring both of these in and see which one we want to use. We'll get rid of this. And now we're going to open up those two images we just created. Select all, control A, control C to copy, paste that in here. Let's see now the title is pretty big. That doesn't leave a lot of room for other things because there's two other things I want to put either here or there. Bring this one in. I think this is the one. So I can still put the elements over to the either side that I want to. The background is actually sufficient on this. So I was going to go with like a more rustling background, but we had the scaffold and all that. So it actually will work. We got the yellow, loud yellow jacket, Dick Tracy style that Jim is known to wear. Now let's go find a Jim image to put on here. I like this image of Jim because he looks kind of sinister, kind of angry. And you got this reflection in his glasses that kind of plays with the lights that are already in that AI image. So luckily on the new Photoshop, you just click remove background. It does a pretty good job. You see, that's perfect. So what we want to do here is we want to kind of fit this in. It's way too small. It looks like Beetlejuice had shrunken head. This actually might be all right. And one way you can kind of size this up is you bring down the opacity. So you can kind of see. So yeah, see, that's too big, I think. I'll make that 60. Just line this up with his shoulders. I think that's close. Tilt that head a little bit. You can see I'm lining it up here with the, the back of his collar. And it doesn't matter that we're going to be missing the top of his head. So now we actually have to go into the polygonal select tool, which is right here. And we'll actually keep this opacity just a little bit low. So we can kind of cut around. Move in. Kind of like how these squares pop up, but they can be a little bit distracting if you're not used to it. So let's pop back one instance here. I always have the feather set to one point. So it doesn't get too choppy. So if you have your feather set on the polygonal select tool to too choppy, which means I guess zero feather is what I would consider that. It's not a technical term. What that can lead to is a really crappy looking image. It can look choppy, like I said, like how these edges look right there on his shoulders. That's how the cut would look if we had no feather on this. Let's see how this ends up looking. Go all the way back. Let's bring the opacity up. Now see, it, it doesn't look right. His head's too small. It's just a trial and error thing. It, it, it happens. Might go with that size. Even if it looks a little bit too big. Too big is better than too small. Too big, it looks like you might be doing a parody. Too small looks like you don't know what you're doing in Photoshop. You see I'm zoomed in here at 400% to do this. That's what I recommend. Chin back up there. I think that's better. It might even be a little too big, but for our purposes here, people are going to know it's an AI image anyway. So, in fact, I think we can bring his head down a little bit. So we trim the rest of that off. Cut this like this, make it look a little natural. That contouring. Let's zoom back, see what that looks like. Um, it's not bad. We'll test it. Let's uh, mess with this brightness and contrast. See how that's going to look. We're going to give it a shot. There's two other elements I'm going to open in on the sides here. So we're going to duplicate this layer because I'm going to play with it now. Which means I'm going to cut parts of it out. i got to quit using graphic design terminology. So now I want to cut the belt right here. I'm going to cut part of his head off to make the belt be in the front. So let's go here. Cut that off. That looks bad, so we can't let that go that way. Let's go back to the drawing board, basically. I had to admit, I was pretty pissed off that the AI images didn't come out how I wanted them to in the thumbnail. I'm doing the screen record, I'm putting this out there for people like you to kind of see my process, and I got two duds right there basically, two thumbnails I did not like. I wasn't happy, but ultimately we did come up with a great thumbnail that got you to click and watch that Jim Cornette video. So let's dive into how that thumbnail was created after this brief message. Gotta find a happy medium because I do like this picture of Jim. It's possible that we don't even need this whole AI image. Let's try something like that. Maybe we don't need this background. Maybe it's overproducing. Bring this in like this. Bring that contrast way up on there. Let's remove background. We don't need these things anymore. So that's not necessary. Now let's change this up a little bit. Let's add some graphics, some graphical interpretations to Jim here. Make it in our style. 
kind of want to make it look like a cartoon. That looks a lot cleaner. I like that. Let's take a look and see how that'll look on YouTube here. Back up a little bit. I think that's good because we really want Jim to be the focal. There's enough stylization on there. And that's not all we're going to do to stylize this. This is going to be a completely custom graphic here. So there's the prompt we're going with. Takes a little while here with Microsoft Designer, but it's worth it. I like this. They actually he got too much of that prompt because you have the WWE logo up there. We don't really need that, but I do like that background. So we're going to copy that and bring that in here. We don't want that logo in there. It doesn't add anything. Let's go ahead and center that. I'm kind of visually centering the, the aisle here so everything matches up. Then we're going to put that behind the image of Jim. I like to do a gradient over this, but we're going to add the other elements that we want to put in there. I basically made a brother love. I did this on Mage Space. I made a Vince Russo body type and a brother love body type. I they made the body type too large. I don't believe Bruce Pritchard is that large, but I really just wanted the colors because people will see that on the thumbnail. We'll go here and remove background. That did a good job. So we can just go ahead and merge these two layers here. I'm sure there's an easier way to do it, but that's the way I know how to do it. So we'll paste this in here. We'll kind of have him. It's going to be Pritchard over his shoulder here because obviously Pritchard is a prolific podcaster and he's also had run-ins with Cornette. They've had a relationship for a while. I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to remove background on this one too. So I kind of wanted a, a Russo body type that made it look like he was wearing New York Knicks colors because I remember him wearing jerseys like that back in wrestling. So that'll catch the eye and that'll go together. So I'll paste that in here. Kind of want him to be a little bit bigger because he's the one who Cornette kind of has the most run-ins with. Now we've removed the background here on Pritchard. We'll do that oil paint filter on him. See, that didn't work out too good. So we're going to have to go in there and custom do that. Might as well just cut this right now since we're here. We don't really need to zoom in too far because it's kind of easy to eyeball it with the polygonal select. We just need Bruce's head. It's almost perfect. Maybe it's a little too big. So we're going to get over here. Just kind of look at it next to the other head. We'll back up. We lower him a little bit, and I think that's perfect, actually. We'll just get rid of the other one in a minute here. We're going to go ahead and brighten and tighten this thing up here with brightness and contrast. Bring the contrast up. Brightness is good. See the difference. Now we want to go into that oil paint filter again. My first time using filters on Photoshop in a while. That's not bad, actually, but we are going to brighten that a little bit. Oof, that's ugly. And <laughs> we don't want to use lighting. So it's a little bit blurred, but people will get the point because of the, the costume. Up that contrast. Yeah, see, that's perfect. See the difference? So, get in here and cut around the chin. You look a little cleaner. Now we'll cut that back part of the AI image. There's one. Look, his head might be too small now. I guess one way we can deal with that is make the body smaller. And people are going to look at this for a brief moment. So if the head's too big, head's too small, it's not a huge problem. Remove the background in here. Hopefully they don't get Balboa. That's eh, not bad. Not a bad job because it's not the best image in terms of resolution. So let's merge those layers together. Let's go in here and play with the brightness and contrast. People will know that this is Russo because he's got that iconic beard these days and grayish hair. Let's bring the colors. Let's fix these colors a little bit because he's a little bit too red. Let's take that, that red out a little bit. Put a little bit of blue in there. Do the same over here. Add a little bit of yellow for that gray hair effect. Leave a little red in. Now he's getting a little too blue, so we gotta go there. I do think that looks a little bit better though, but let's, for highlights, I think that's what we want. 
So we're going to go ahead and cut around the chin here. I'll copy. I can make that head a little bit smaller. I think that works out. We'll get rid of that AI image behind his head. Now we add a gradient to everything. We're going to take some of these reds. And let's just take some of this yellow right here. Let's see what kind of gradient we can get out of this. Go to the gradient tool. Go up here to basics. Select the colors we just put together. I don't want that red to be more prominent, so we'll up that a little bit. Now let's play with it in layer effects. The layer blending properties here is what we want to do. Oh, I like that. That's almost perfect as is. We want it to be apparent who that is right there. I think that's it. I think that's our thumbnail. Easy enough. I like it. See what happens. Go ahead and upload that thumbnail right here. Kind of gives you an idea of how it's going to look on YouTube right away. And I believe that that's a thumbnail that does not need any text. It speaks for itself. You know, having a good thumbnail is really the top level of that AIDA structure. But how are you going to get your video in front of people, especially if you have a small channel? When I put this video out on my channel, I had less than a thousand subscribers. So the likelihood of me getting in front of the right people was a little bit low. If we don't have a good description on the video. Now, a lot of people don't think about their video description, but if you have a small channel, it can actually help you quite a bit. And I believe that it did serve us very well on this Jim Cornette video. So I'm gonna go through the process of how I took the simple video transcript out of Premiere and took it to ChatGPT and created a really good video description from a search engine optimization standpoint that put the video in front of viewers like you. So you can give me your attention, interest, and you made the decision to click, which was your action. I'm gonna kinda of go into the process of developing a really strong YouTube video description, plus the chapters, after this short break. Now we need the description, the SEO. I'm going to use my transcript from Adobe Premiere to create the actual SEO, the description that'll be on that video, but you see some of the words, the way I speak, whatever. It says Cornick instead of Cornet, so we're gonna go ahead and basically replace that anywhere it appears. Or Nick. Replace with Cornette. Now we gotta go in here and kill all these timestamps. I would usually just do a find and replace for that, but since I probably talk about numbers in the video, I know I reference subscriber counts and all that stuff. We wanna go in here and do this manually so I don't delete that. See, I would've deleted this 391 comments, 812,000 searches. None of that would've came up. That would not be good for SEO purposes, especially because I can kinda spot check and see when these problems come up as I delete, so that's good too. That's Stephen P. New. Not super important to do that, but I'm doing it. All right, so we're gonna save that, select all. I will write my prompt for this for ChatGPT. I'm gonna just write it right in here. So here's our prompt. Using the supplied text as reference, create an article about how Jim Cornette grew his YouTube channel to be one of the most popular wrestling channels without doing many of the things YouTube channel experts suggest. The ideal reader for this article will be wrestling fans interested in Jim Cornette. Please write the article from a third-party perspective, structured like a New York Times, I said article, but I want editorial. So now we're going to just control S to save, control A to select all, control C to copy, and we're going to ChatGPT. We'll just paste this into ChatGPT, click send, and we'll start to get a foundation for a good YouTube video description. And they are important especially on a growing channel like mine. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. I like to do that in word counter here because it'll give me a count on the characters and all that. And we could just clean up a lot of this language. All right, so we have our description now. Made some changes to it, obviously. Now we want some chapters. But first, I'm going to go back and make sure I put my links some of the things I do in there, so I'll copy from my other video here. You never want to lead with your links. That's a mistake a lot of channels make because the first 150 characters of your description are pretty important. So now we're going to rewatch the video on 2x speed to start to put the chapters in. And I won't bore you with that, so we'll speed this part of the video up. Open up a new notepad so I can make my chapters.
All right, so we have all of our titles here. Well, I call them titles, but technically they're chapters, but you want your chapters to read like YouTube video titles. So that's what we have here. We're gonna copy that. Just got done writing these and we're gonna throw these in the Cornet video. So there we have it. With that, we're ready to launch this thing. So it's 10:14 a.m. Phoenix time, March 11th. We'll check back in in 48 hours and see how this video did. Right now we're at two views and those are from me. And I'm gonna show you how we use the community tab and animated GIFs to promote this throughout the week to continue getting views on YouTube. So when I originally screen captured my creative process for developing the Jim Cornette video, I expected maybe 2,000, 3,000 views within a week. And my intention was to revisit this in 48 hours. I actually revisited it in four days but I had almost 40,000 views on the video at that time, which was well beyond my expectations, but that's a good thing. Now we're gonna get into the analytics of the video. Who watched it? How'd they find it? How long did they watch it? And after this short break, you'll find out exactly how much money did this Jim Cornette video make in four days. So roughly five days ago, I took the Jim Cornette video live and I did not expect those results. You can see how Jim's video compares to the other videos I've uploaded on my channel, the last 10. Jim clearly performed well beyond my expectations. So why did this video do so well? You can see the estimated revenue. A lot of people don't show that, but there it is. Gained 232 subscribers with this. I was below 1,000 subscribers. I've since broken 1,300 subscribers since uploading this video. You can see right here, 36,000 views. Watch time is 2.4 thousand hours. Average view duration is 40%. I haven't had a lot of videos on any of the channels that I managed that hit 40% average retention. Usually it's around 26 to 30%. That's almost 50% of the video. So 72% of viewers, you guys, were still watching at the 30 second mark, which is above typical on my video and probably most videos, especially from a small creator standpoint. Most of the views on this video came from Browse Feature, which is a testament to YouTube's algorithm. So of the 295,000 impressions that the videos received, 84% came from YouTube recommending my content with a 7.3% click-through rate, which means 7.3% of that 295,000 actually clicked the video to watch. And of that 7%, the average view was almost five minutes here, you can see. And there was also some external sites sharing the video. I know in the official Cult of Cornette Facebook group, they shared it. I'm not a member, but I heard about that. And I did see it shared on Reddit in the official Jim Cornette subreddit, which I don't do a lot of Reddit, but I did go and check out some of the comments on there, most of which were positive. So for search terms, we see Jim Cornette obviously is 39% of our search traffic. Didn't get a ton of views from search though. As you can see right here, it only comprised about 6.4% of our actual views. We were actually ranking really well for Jim Cornette. Ranking doesn't mean a whole lot anymore in the modern times of YouTube where the algorithm really drives most of the traffic through the browse feature or suggested videos, but I use rankability as kind of a way to gauge the SEO that I put into the actual video description and not to mention the audio in the video because YouTube does crawl the audio to create that transcript which is searchable on the platform as well. So because I use Jim Cornette's name quite a bit in the video, it's likely YouTube also grabs that data when it creates a transcript for the video. So that's another element to video SEO that a lot of people don't think about. And obviously, since I'm a growing channel, the vast majority of viewers on this video were non-subscribers. We had 0.8% subscribers watched, but I think when we uploaded this video, it might have been around 900 subs, something like that. I can't recall. Have your age demographic breakdown here, your country breakdowns for the video. Engagement's been solid, and here you can see there's not much of a dip throughout the entire video. Obviously, the average view duration is five minutes, basically, uh, between four and five minutes. That's a solid retention. I'm not saying that as a flex. I'm just actually impressed because this video has performed well beyond my expectations. I thought maybe we'd crack 2,000 to 10,000 within the first week, but I'm very impressed with it. I'm actually very humbled and grateful because a lot of this engagement came through comments. So if you look here, you'll see we have 1.1 thousand thumbs up on this video. And down here, you'll see that we have 659 total comments. Now, that can be a little bit skewed because I did reply to every comment. Some of the comments, I only gave a thumbs up and a heart because I really didn't have much to contribute to the conversation. But you will see almost every single comment here that was placed by a viewer does have a reply from me. 
and I took the time to kind of check it out. And I read every comment, and you know, to everyone who's commented on this video, I greatly appreciate it. Everybody who watched the video, I greatly appreciate it. With the thumbs up, or even a thumbs down, I'm not sure how many of those we had. Let's take a look. So yes, we did have some thumbs down. We had 45 thumbs down on this video, 1,159 thumbs up. So thank you to the 45, and thank you to the 1.1 thousand. I appreciate it. So I did say I was going to tell you how to promote in the community tab, but the fact is we didn't promote a whole lot in the community tab for this video because it really just blew up quickly. But you will see right here, we did do a post four days ago promoting the video and we had 33 thumbs up. We had the link right here. Jim Cornette breaks all the rules. And we obviously we had the image of Jim, so this was the draw-in, and we had one comment on this. So because the video did so well, I didn't feel the need to continue promoting on Community Tab, whereas if it hadn't done that great, I might have added some more posts. And then this GIF right here is actually talking about the video I'm recording right now, because I did screen cap the entire process, so that's just kind of letting my viewers understand what's to come on the channel. But anyway, that's the Jim Cornette video, and that's how we promoted it. I believe it was very successful because there are quite a few people searching Jim. Obviously, we didn't get the vast majority of these views from YouTube search, but since there's such an active audience on YouTube that engage with Jim's content regularly, there's not a whole lot of people targeting Jim's name, which I did clearly with the content, the description, and the actual title of the video. Because of all those factors, we, we had a really good head start, so we ended up getting quite a few views. Not to mention the people that shared this video on Reddit and Facebook. I'm not sure if people sent it to friends or any of that. And we also had quite a few comments on this video. If you apply some of these same strategies to your YouTube channel and your content, you're going to start getting a lot of views too. And you're going to start getting a lot of subscribers. If you want to learn even more about YouTube SEO, check out some of these videos over here. And to find out how I might be able to help you with your channel, click that link and we can get in touch. Again, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time on Video SEO Club.